before we step into the session, I would like to read out few important rules to all of you. The first, all the audience should be very clear that this debate is not a battleground or a match where any party giving their presentation are to be rewarded as winner or judged as loser. This debate is but natural an educational presentation in order to put forward the viewpoints of two major most religions of the world and discuss about each other's belief in the Bible and the Quran. MashaAllah, IREF and RKP as combined organizers of this debate feel proud to be living in a beautiful country like India whose soil has a pluralistic society and where the law of our land India provides us a fair provision to peacefully gather people and discuss the points of agreement and disagreement without forcing our opinion upon each other and being justified by discussing the subject with evidences. Respecting the law of this land, India, I request all of you not to get emotional or sentimental and then react in a way that may invite unnecessary problems for your illegal behavior. Slogans are strictly prohibited. If the audience feel like appreciating any point of the speaker, they can applaud but not shout any slogans. I would like to reiterate this point. Slogans are not allowed. Applaud is permitted. Nobody is allowed to inter interrupt the speakers during their complete speech. Anyone who feels right or wrong about any statement given in the speech by any speaker, then you get a fair chance in the question and answer session to clarify your question, but you cannot interrupt the speakers during their speeches. The rules for the question and answer session shall be read out before its commencement. Being the master of conduct of this session, I am authorized to add or amend any of the above rules. I welcome all of you with Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The topic of this evening's debate is the Bible or the Quran, which is the God's word. A common man might answer this question, which is the God's word, by either replying that I think that both Bible and the Quran are the God's word. Or he might say that both Bible and the Quran are not the God's word. Or he might say that only Bible is the God's word. Or he might say only Quran is the God's word. As a Muslim, sincerely adhering to the original standards of all evidences, I proclaim proudly that Quran is the only 100% verbatim word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to give any answer except the answer I gave or the option I selected to believe any other scripture to also be the God's word would be as wrong as believing the reply of 1 plus 0 instead of 1 as a little number less than 1 or a little number greater than 1. In short, if somebody is given an equation 1 plus 0, the only answer for that is 1. If anybody reduces that number or increases that number, in both the cases the answer is wrong. Similarly, to believe any other scripture except the glorious Quran to be the 100% verbatim word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would also be wrong. But then, why do I not believe the Bible 
to be the God's word. I would request Pastor Ranjit Ophir to kindly help me in discussing this subject to my audience. I would like Pastor Ranjit Ophir to kindly pronounce a seven lettered word to all the audience here. And the spelling of the word is B A S T A R D. To make it more clear, B for bush, A for always, S for certain, T for terrorist, A for ambushed, R for rebuked. And D for dog. I request also Ophir to kindly pronounce this word to my audience. That's all. Brother, I agree with the full form of that uh, abbreviation, so called abbreviation. It, it can be pronounced as uh, bastard. And then. I leave it to all my decent audience to believe or not to believe that can this word be used by the Almighty God? In our society, if any common man abuses another man without a genuine reason by calling this word, he can be booked under the Indian section 500. He can be punished for it. But that word occurs in the Bible for no less than three different times. Not once, not twice, thrice it occurs in the Bible. Believed to be the word of God. Or take it, it occurs in the Bible only three times. I'm asking, can the Almighty God speak this language? And if somebody says that the translators in English they have mistranslated that word. Somebody supposed to say that in the originals, I put the originals in inverted commas, in the original manuscript, this is not the correct word for it. So I would like to give the evidence from the Strong's Reference Dictionary, from Hebrew to English and Greek to English. The Hebrew word for the that if in the English word is man zare and man zare if translated would only be b a s t a r d and in Greek the word is nothos and nothos according to the strong reference dictionary if translated into English it would only be b a s t a r d in both the cases the right translation is b a s t a r d and this word occurs in the Bible in the Old Testament twice and in the New Testament one time. In the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 23, verse number 2, God says, And the B-A-S-T-A-R-D shall not enter the temple of God, shall not enter the services of the God. It occurs again in the book of Zechariah, chapter number 9, verse number 6. And in the New Testament, in the Greek original manuscript, it occurs in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 12, verse number 28. These are the three different places where this word occurs. Therefore, I strongly believe that this word can never be used by the Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has to be by some historian or some other human being. But this word can never be the word of Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, the Bible is not the God's word. But then, but then, what is the Bible? Bible is derived from the Greek word Biblos. And Biblos, it means a library of books or a collection of books. And this Bible is a collection of different books basically categorized 
as the books of Old Testament and as the books of the New Testament. And then, the Bibles are different. But as I have come to learn that Pastor Ophir follows the word of God of the Protestant Church that has only 66 books, therefore, the topic of my debate would be more centralized on the Protestant Bible, whereas the Catholic Bible has 73 books, that is, 7 books more than the Protestant Bible, which the Protestants do not believe to be the Word of God. The Old Testament is believed unanimously by both the Jews and the Christians to be a revelation from Almighty God. And the first five books of the Old Testament of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy are believed unanimously again by both the Jews and the Christians to have been written down by Moses, may peace be upon him, by Hazrat Musa alayhi salam on the authority of the Almighty God, which again I disagree. The reason? The Bible does not stand as a proof to this claim. The Bible itself does not agree that Moses is the author of the first five books. Neither does the Bible agree that the Almighty God is the author of these books. How can I prove it? If you read the first five books of the Old Testament at random, open it anyway, the first five books, and you will come across about 700 statements, about 700 statements that are an evidence that they are not a revelation from Almighty God, neither have they been written by Moses, may peace be upon him. For example, the statements are, and Moses said unto the God, and God said unto Moses, and Moses said unto the God, the God said unto Moses. If God revealed it to Moses, the statement should be, I said unto Moses, and Moses said unto me. It cannot be, God said unto Moses, and Moses said unto the God. This statement does not occur once. At random open any of the five books, you will come across more than 700 times that a third person is speaking there. And still if somebody, they say, no, no, this is not a genuine reason to disbelieve that the Old Testament or the first five books are not the revelation from Almighty God. So I will have to give another example. And this example is so simple that my eldest daughter, almost eight years old, even, even she will easily understand that this is not a revelation from Almighty God. Now what is that example? The fifth book of the Old Testament, that is the book of Deuteronomy, ends on chapter number 34. When you open chapter number 34 and read verse number 5, 6, 7 and 8, easy, this is not the book that I wrote it, this is not a book written by the Muslims, this is what sir believes to be the word of God, this is what the Christians believe to be the word of God. I want my Christian friends, if they have brought their Bibles, to kindly open the Bible and check the reference. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 34, verse number 5, 6, 7 and 8. Very easy reference to remember. How do you remember it? After 3, you get 4 as the number. 34, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. And the verses are, and Moses died in the land of Moab. Can you imagine? Moses is getting a revelation and Moses is writing that Moses died in the land of Moab and he, that is the Almighty God, and he buried him in the valley in the land of Moab and Moses was 120 years old when he died. How can Moses write this? How can Moses write and say that Moses died in the land of Moab and he that is God buried him in the land of Moab and that Moses was 120 years old when he died. Therefore, this cannot be the word of God. And if once 
statement is removed from the word of God by God. It can never be the 100% verbatim word of God. Therefore, I believe that the Bible is not the God's word. Then, if you read the Bible, you will come across a history of a great prophet. We Muslims to revere that prophet. We call him Hud alayhi salam. Surah Hud of the glorious Quran is Surah number 11. Hud alayhi salam, who is referred in the Bible in the Old Testament as Prophet Judah. And this Prophet Judah is also the father of the Jewish people. Judaism and the Jews, they got their name as Judaism and Jew from this Prophet, Prophet Judah. He lived in a place by the name Judea. There is a very amazing story in the word of God. This story, I would like to put it not to the criteria of the Quran of judging which is the God's word, but to the very criteria of the Bible itself to judge how the God's word should be. If you read second book of Timothy, chapter number 3, verse number 16, verse number 1 and 6, it says, for any scripture to be breathed by the God, if God has breathed the scripture, meaning if it is the word of God, it shall be applicable for doctrine, it should have a good lesson in it, or a rebuke, meaning if you have done something, something wrong, immediately you should be punished for it. Third is correctness, you should be corrected if you have made an error. And the fourth is instruction to the righteousness. I would like to repeat the reference for Pastor Ophi to open it up. Second book of Timothy, chapter number 3, verse number 16. Four criteria. Now let us see the story that I am going to tell all of you now, whether it fits this standard of the Bible itself or not. Prophet Judah and his story is mentioned in the book of Genesis, chapter number 38, verse number 1 to verse number 30. The story says, history says about this mighty prophet of God, Nauz Billah, may Allah forbid, that Judah had three sons by the name Er, Onan and Shela. Judah married his eldest son to a woman by the name Tamar. And this fellow Er, the eldest son of Judah, according to the Bible, was a wicked person. So when he went to consume the marriage, God slew him. As if God did not have any other time to slay him. At that very spot, he was about to consume the marriage, God slew him. And he was killed. Ask any Christian, Sir, what is the lesson there? The lesson is from 2 Timothy. You see, rebuke. He was a wicked person, God slew him. Good. Then the story continues that according to the tradition, according to the custom there, Judah married his second son to his widowed daughter-in-law. Onan was married to the same woman, the same widow. And this Onan, he thought that if I beget a child, if DNA is done in that time and that child belongs to me, if he is my child, why should he be given the name of my deceased brother? He felt jealous. God became angry, God slew him. Ask any Christian, what is the lesson, sir? He would say, see, he was jealous, God gave him the punishment, he was slow. Very good. The story continues now. Judah tells to his daughter-in-law, Tamar, you see, Tamar, my third son is too young to get married to you. You return back to your father's home. When he grows up, I will call you back and I will get you married to my third son, Shela. When the third son grew up, Judah thought as a father that even my third son will die if I marry this third son to Tamar who looks to be of ill omen. So he cheats her. He forgets the promise. The prophet of God forgets the promise. He does not marry Tamar but he marries his third son to some other woman. So when Tamar comes to, know, comes to know about this, she said I will surely take a revenge against my father-in-law. How does she take the revenge? So the Bible tells us, it's not what I say, it's not what the Muslims say, 
It's not what the Quran says. It's what your Bible says, sir. It says, Tamar, she played a harlot. What is a harlot? Harlot, according to the Oxford Dictionary, it means a prostitute. She plays a prostitute. And she says, that when my father-in-law will pass to shear the sheep on this land, what I am going to do is, I will play a harlot and ask him to commit fornication with me. When Judah was passing Naus Billah, prophet of God, he sees the daughter-in-law but does not recognize according to the Bible, she was covering the face. So what he does is, he goes to her and he says, what should I give you to come in unto you? What should I pay you for that? So Tamar, the daughter-in-law, she says, a kid from the flock of the sheep. So he says, done. Agreement is over. I'll pay. But Tamar says, what is the trust? What is the guarantee that you'll pay me? So he asks, what guarantee do you want? She says, I want the ring, the staff, and your or your ring, your staff as a sign that you will not mistrust me. He gives it away and the Bible says, it reports, Judah went in unto her and she conceived. But you see, New International Version. In the New International Version, I think it's kept down there. The Bible translators have become bold now. They thought that the people are not understanding it properly. They say, he had sexual intercourse with her. And she conceived. Whom did she conceive? Farayeth was a child whom she conceived. And this Farayeth, why did I say all this story, do you know? This Farayeth, in Gospel of Matthew, who is Farayeth? Born out of illegal sexual intercourse, between the father-in-law and the daughter-in-law, this phrase is put in the New Testament in the first book of Matthew, Gospel according to Matthew, chapter number 1, verse number 3, to become the father of Jesus Christ, my peace be upon him, now Billah, to a man, to a prophet who had no father, they gave a father in the Bible, who is from an illegitimate progeny. Therefore I say, this cannot be the God's word. God cannot speak all this. I will continue to ask our Christian friends, what is the lesson here? According to your Bible, it's not a doctrine. It's not a rebuke. Why is it not a rebuke? The verses do not continue after that. After she conceived, and the names of the children, God didn't say, I will slay you. God didn't say, Judah, I will kill you. Judah realizes himself, oh, I am a great sinner. So he seeks forgiveness, which is a greater sin. Only to be jealous or commit fornication. Committed fornication, God doesn't become angry. No doctrine, no moral. What is the moral here? And the Christian don't want to answer it. According to the standards of the Bible, the Bible does not fit to be the word of God. And this is not the one case there. If you read the book of Genesis, chapter number 19, verse number 35, there is a case of incest. Even this is an incest. What is an incest? Incest means illegal sexual relationship between close blood relatives like the father and the daughters brothers and the sisters sons and the mothers if you read Genesis chapter number 19 verse number 35 there is a case of incest between daughters seducing their father they give the father father Lot Luth according to the Bible they invite him with intoxication and then the eldest daughter, she commits fornication with her father. She says, there is no man here, and she commits a fornication. Then what she does is, she encourages the younger sister. And she says, my sister, why don't you also try the same thing? Tonight, you make our father drink, and then you have the sexual intercourse with her. Book of Genesis, chapter number 19, verse number 35. Book of Genesis, chapter number 35, verse number 22 between mother and the sons. Book of 2 Samuel, between brothers and the sisters. There are cases of incest altogether in the Old Testament. I'm asking, 
does God speak these things to his people? What is the doctrine there? What is the moral there? And the answer is, you see, this is mentioned in the Bible so that other people don't do it. I mean, as a father, I honestly ask my Christian friends, as a father, as an elder brother, as a husband, would you allow your women at home to read these stories? Would you allow them that they should believe that the prophets of God were people who committed incest? And I challenge Pastor Ranjit Ophir, I challenge him to read out slowly in simple English from the book of Ezekiel, chapter number 23, not all the verses, only verse number 3, verse number 8, and verse number 20 and 21. I challenge him to read it out to the audience here. Book of Ezekiel, <laughs> chapter number 23, verse number 3, verse number 8, verse number 20, and verse number 21. Not more, not less. I challenge him to read it out. And I'm sure if he's a decent person, he will never read it out. Therefore, I believe that the Bible cannot be the God's word. Moreover, there are versions of the Bible. Versions. What are versions? So the Christian friend tells us, and I'm sure Pastor Ophir will do it in his speech, he has brought two different translations of the Quran. So he's going to say, this is a version of the Quran, this is a version of the Quran. But no sir, they are not versions of the Quran. They are only different translations of the Quran. What is the difference between a version and a translation? The difference between a version and a translation is, translation can be done by the translators by selecting different choice of words. Words can be different. A different translator selects a particular word and he translates it. But what is a version? According to the Oxford Dictionary, version means the change in the original language. The change in the original language. That is a version. And the Bible has undergone several changes in the originals. The first King James Version, believed to be by the Protestants, to be the authorized version of the Bible, as though it was the revealed word of God, was first printed in 1611. The version came after that. 1881. Another version came after that. 1952. Another version, 1971. Another version, 1980s. By now, Pastor will be in a better position to say how many versions have come. And yet, and yet, the Christians believe the word of God has not been changed. I'll give an example. The great, great, great grandfather of a pastor writes a will and the great great grandfather of the pastor changes that will and the testament and the grandfather makes another major change in that will and the testament and the father he makes another major change in that testament and will and this person also makes another major change in that will yet he believes that what he has as the will today is the same that was laid down by his great, great, great grandfather. Wallah, we Muslims take a very serious notice of making the message of the Quran to be protected. I challenge any Christian who is here, I challenge, not offensively, but educationally, I challenge any Christian sitting here, including Pastor Ophir, to read out all the names of the books given in the Bible. Alhamdulillah, my daughter, only eight years, she read out all the surahs in the Quran. We take a serious note to protect the revealed message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you 
honestly analyze the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned very clearly in the Quran. In Surah Ali Imran, Surah number 3 and number 78, with which I started my talk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa inna minhum la fariqin yalwuna al sinatihim litahasabuhu min al kitab. Wa inna minhum min al kitabi al sinatihim litahasabuhu min al kitab. Wama huwa min al kitab. And among them, among the Jews and the Christians, are some people who distort the book so that you think that this book is from the book whereas it is not from the book and they say about Allah and they say this is from Allah whereas it is not from Allah and they say about Allah a lie and they know it very well. To conclude the talk, I leave it to Pastor Ophir to make clear why Moses, peace be upon him, wrote his own obituary. Obituary, you know, the stone that is put on the grave. Before dying, he wrote it down. And it is still revealed from God. Then, I would like to know what are the morals of those lessons in the Bible, not according to your interpretation, sir, I want the interpretation from the Bible. Where is the correction and morals given in the Bible for those lessons? And third, can you, God use that dirty, filthy, B-A-S-T-A-R-D word? And fourth, I leave the challenge open to you so that the people know the Bible that you read as the word of God. If you have taken up the challenge to read out the book of Ezekiel chapter number 23, verse number 3, verse number 8, verse number 20, and verse number 21, so that all the people sitting here, the Christians and the non-Christians, know what the word of God is. I hope I concluded very well for you to assimilate the points. Savior Jesus Christ. Namaste. Praise the Lord. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to appreciate the presentations of uh, the children of my brother Imran. It was so wonderful to see those children learning the word of God and uh, being brought up in godly manners by the blessed mother and father and it is not a wonder little wonder that uh, the eldest daughter has such a wonderful memory power because my brother imran is of no little intelligence he is a great brilliant man uh, at a very young age he he knows greek arabic and sanskrit and uh, all these languages so I appreciate, I take it as a cause of pride that I can share this uh, platform along with my beloved brother, Brother Imran. And I thank uh, the IREF for giving me this uh, privilege of sharing this platform with Brother Imran. And I am really fascinated at his commitment for truth, commitment for uh, finding the real truth of God and following it and proclaiming it. I appreciate him and I praise God for this wonderful opportunity given unto me. He has thrown before me some challenges and raised some questions which I can very well answer and explain. But if I do that, I will not be able to share with you what God has kept in my heart. So I will come to his questions at the end of my discourse. At the outset, I want to tell you that this is not a debate between a Christian and a Muslim. This is a debate between a Muslim and a Muslim. Because I consider myself a Muslim too. Thank you. 
I am a Muslim because Muslim is a person who practices Islam as the style of life and Islam in Arabic means a life of total submission to God and Mr. Imran is a person totally submitted to God's will and I consider myself also a man totally submitted to do God's will so you can call me a Christian Muslim or maybe I am a Muslim and uh, Abraham in the Bible he offered his son as a sacrifice to the God Almighty intelligently I am avoiding, avoiding the name of that son you know it, it will stir up another controversy but that son whoever it was Abraham was willing to offer his son so he was a Muslim he was submissive to God's will and the Bible says Jesus also was totally submissive to God's will he came to do God's will so Jesus also was a Muslim I, I appreciate it and I confess it and I tell all my Christian brothers and sisters if you want to be a real Christian you also have to be a real Muslim Thank you. So actually there is no dispute when uh, my beloved brothers, brother Mansoor and brother Afak, they have come to my house to request me to take part in this debate. I gave them a letter in writing and uh, I am sure the IREF office management has this letter copy. I said in my letter, if the topic is the Bible or the Quran which is God's word, if that is the topic, I said, we the Rashtriya Kaistava Parishad believe that every religious book, holy book has the word of God. As such there is no dispute. We believe the Bible is the word of God and also Quran has the word of God and we honor both the books and we follow both the books and we study both the books. So as for me, there is no dispute at all. But still, because they have insisted on the topic, I said, okay, I'll be glad to see my, Christ my Christian brothers and Muslim brothers, Christian sisters and Muslim sisters sitting together to discuss about the true way to reach God. So my brothers and sisters, first of all, I want to emphasize on one thing, that such debates are the need of the hour. We need to have such debates. Many Muslim friends and Christian brothers also, they called me, they spoke to me over the phone, and said, no, no, Brother Ranjit, you should not be engaging in these debates. The Christianity doesn't uh, uh, agree or allow or permit such debates. Or this will stir up a communal riots, disturbances. No, no, not at all, not at all. This is not a quarrel. This is a discussion between two brothers. And in the Holy Quran, in the glorious Quran, I use that word consciously. In the glorious Quran, Surah number 5, verses 82 and 83, it is said that Christians are the closest in affection, in love to Muslims. For a Muslim, the most dreadful enemy or hostile enemy is the Jew. For a Muslim, the worst enemy is a Jew and a pagan idolaters but the closest relative and brother is the Christian so my Christian brothers and sisters you must know that we are here with our closest relatives my Muslim brothers and sisters I tell you I come before you as your closest relative I'm your brother speaking to you thank you very much so there is no such tension here. We are all sitting here as brothers and sisters. 
to share what I feel and hear what you feel. Now, why these debates? The need of the debate arises from the fact that intelligent questions have been raised by the scholars of both the religions, both the communities. I repeat, intelligent questions, intelligent objections have been raised by the scholars of both the communities regarding the other religion. Muslim scholars have raised many questions like the questions raised by my brother Imran right now. Many Muslim scholars, the great Ahmad Didat and other great Muslim scholars, they have raised many, many intelligent questions against the Bible or questioning the authenticity of the Bible. And Christian scholars have come up with intelligent answers also. And vice versa. Christian scholars have raised many intelligent questions about Islam and many Muslim scholars have come up with very good convincing intelligent answers. Christian scholars have questions about Islam. Islam has answers. Islamic scholars have questions about Christianity and they have answers. So there should be a common platform to talk like this. I want to hear your intelligent answers and share my intelligent answers so together we can know the truth in a better way, in a deeper way and live closer to God. Such debates help to build up communal harmony rather than creating a communal right unless we are uncivilized, uneducated, uncivilized like that. No, no, we are all good people, civilized people, we are all the cream of the society. I am excited to see this wonderful congregation. Each and every one of us is a gem of the society. So none of us is getting emotional. We are all enjoying this discussion. So in a positive way, now I will proceed to tell you as Christians, why we believe the Bible is the word of God? Now I come to my topic, my subject. And I think I have been given uh, half an hour and I finished ten minutes now. Okay. Exactly. It's okay. I have uh, calculatedly, I have done that. Because I need only ten to twelve, fifteen minutes to share my uh, discourse. I am very calculative on that. As my brother Imran quoted about Ezekiel 18th chapter, Genesis 19th chapter and all those things. I humbly submit as my brother Mansoor has mentioned, introduced me to you that I have read the Bible 114th time. And I have read Ezekiel 18 also 114 times and also Genesis 19th chapter also. I read 114 times. And we have got our explanation for that. We have got our reasons. It's not that we do not know what is written in Ezekiel 18 or we do not know uh, Genesis 19 chapter. My brother has pleased me by asking all those questions because he spoke exactly as I expected. I knew my Muslim brothers have these objections. I knew it. So I praise God that he came up with the, uh, exactly the argument which I expected. Now, I will come to that later. First, I will be positive in my approach. I will, I will always, always be positive only. I will never be aggressive or hurting anyone. Because as a Christian, as the Quran says, I am the closest to you in love and affection. I don't want to hurt anyone. I really love my brother Imran. Whatever comes out of this discussion, after the discussion, we are still brothers and friends. So all those objections, they don't hurt me because I know, I, first I had difficulty with those passages, but the Lord helped me to know His truth. So it's okay. Now, as a Christian, I solemnly declare 
my faith, my personal faith, and as a representative of the Christian community, I solemnly declare my faith that Bible is the word of God. 100% we Christians believe that the Bible is the word of God. That's what we believe. I'm not asking anyone else to believe it. You are free to believe whatever you want, whatever your conscience says right. Your conscience may tell you otherwise, your common sense may tell you otherwise, but as I am convinced, as a representative of Christian community in this debate, I declare my faith that I 100% believe that Bible is the word of God in spite of all these objections raised. And I will tell you certain very good reasons for that. Dear brothers and sisters, I'll be very brief. Of course, on each of these points I'm going to share before you. A different uh, workshop uh, or different session of discussion needs to be held. But still, I'll carry on with whatever I have in my heart. First and foremost, we believe that the Bible is the word of God for the first and foremost reason that the Bible, the way the Bible was written is unique. The way the Bible was written is very unique, my dear brothers and sisters. The Bible was written 1,600 years over the period of 1,600 years by more than 40 prophets living in different regions, different locations, in different civilizations and different languages. And all the books, as my brother pointed out, the Catholic Bible has 73 and the Protestant Bible has 66 books. To some people that's a big problem. For me there is no such problem at all because if you can kindly get a Catholic Bible, I quote a reference from the Protestant Bible, it reads exactly the same. It has the same meaning there also. John 3.16 is God so loved the world in Protestant version and Catholic version also. Likewise with every verse. So there's no problem at all. The Bible, 66 books, even those extra seven books are regarded as apocrypha, non-canonical. They are not canonized or canonical, that is according to the standards. But still the Catholic Church wanted to retain in the Holy Bible, it doesn't do any harm. Even for them, 66 books are only canonical, not 73. The extra seven, when they are not canonical, why have it, said the Protestant Church. Why not have it, said the Catholic Church. So they have 73, we have 66, but no clash at all. Catholic Bible, Protestant Bible gives the same message. So brothers, the Bible was written over a period of 1,600 years by more than 40 prophets, yet there is a scarlet thread of message running throughout the 66 books from Genesis to Revelation, the single message runs through all the pages of the Bible. I will give you an illustration. There is a poet writing a drama as a dramatist, a playwright writing a drama in India. He writes certain portion of the drama and he dies. After 200 years, another person born in Africa and he takes up and he continues from the point left by that uh, earlier dramatist. The rest of the story he writes, he dies again and some other prophet, some other poet is born in America, he takes up and he writes the rest of the story. So 40 dramatists wrote the same drama, continuation of the same story and this requires a person who lived in all the places throughout these 1600 years that could only be God 
my common sense tells when such a wonderful uniformity is there throughout the 66 books it could be done only by God not by a mere human intelligence that is the first and foremost thing my dear brothers and sisters and secondly secondly I would like to share with you the Bible has fulfilled prophecies in the Quran surah number 373 says Allah is all knowing and only Allah knows the future and everything in the universe we take that name Allah as synonymous with the word God we have no objection and only God as, as we know in the Bible the Lord Jehovah only knows the future in the Quran Allah alone knows the future so you cannot have two people knowing the future you can only have one God who knows the future so whether you call it call him by the name Allah or Yehovah we have no objection we agree that there is one person who knows the future and the past and every secret thing in the whole universe we human beings do not know what happens tomorrow what happens after 10 minutes or 5 minutes or next minute we do not know but only God can tell the future as such Bible has hundreds of prophecies exactly fulfilled I can prove this but I need more time I need more time thank you Bible has fulfilled prophecies I can even tell that the recent unfortunate multinational invasion on Iraq with which we don't agree I'm sad for what happened we don't agree with what President Bush has done we don't agree and many Americans don't agree with what Bush has done so I, I seriously object to what Bush has done against Iraq <laughs> thank you but this unfortunate incident also was foretold in the book of Jeremiah 500 years before Christ that all the multinationals they come and invade against Iraq it is prophesied in the Bible like this there are so many fulfilled prophecies so it has to be the word of Allah or the word of God or else a human being cannot tell the future exactly that is our second reason to believe that the Bible is the word of God thirdly we believe the Bible is the word of God because no statement of the Bible is proven to be anti-scientific or unscientific people may show certain scriptures this is not scientific this is not logical or anything like that but the Bible doesn't have a single statement which is against the proven science the fact that Galileo Galilei the inventor of telescope when he said that the universe is not geocentric the center of the universe is not the earth but the sun is the center of the universe and all the planets revolve around the sun when Galileo said it actually he was agreeing with Copernicus who said it before Galileo said he accepted the Copernican theory of uh, the solar centric universe the church Roman Catholic Church this Galileo was an Italian the Roman Catholic Church found him guilty declared him guilty of heresy or falling away from the teachings of the church in Galileo's day church was very powerful 
so they have punished him they put him under arrest and later he was put under house arrest and in his old age he died of slow fever and many people take this as a proof that christianity is unscientific but what i would uh, what i would say is the punishment imposed upon galileo was not because of any plain statement of the bible but because of the misinterpretation of the church leaders even the quran says that the church leaders are misinterpreting the scripture it is always the problem the scripture is not wrong but the understanding of some christians was wrong they thought the earth was the center of the universe so there was ego problem they wanted to punish galileo but the bible was not the reason for that i said the bible was written by an intelligence superhuman intelligence who lived for more than 1600 years in all the areas guiding all the 40 prophets to write the same story same line of story continuing throughout the 40 prophets and 66 books and secondly i said we believe the bible is the word of god because it has accurately foretold the future events the fulfilled prophecy for us is a conclusive proof that bible is the word of god thirdly we believe bible is the word of god because there is no single statement that goes against the proven science and fifth and my strongest reason the fifth and my strongest reason is that the glorious quran tells us to believe in the bible that is my strongest desire uh, reason the glorious quran i call it a glorious quran my christian brothers and sisters may object to this vocabulary how can you being a christian call quran the glorious quran there may be some people objecting to this but i consciously call it yes i get the signal i consciously call it the glorious quran because the quran testifies about my lord jesus christ that he is ruhullah he is the spirit of god he is the word of god the quran testifies about me as a christian that i am a truth lover i understand the truth i love the muslims i am not proud the quran says it. christians are not proud they are meek they are loving and the quran in many places it says believe in the bible believe in the bible so i will read out just two verses in the quran the quran says o muslims surah number 2136 the quran says o muslims we believe say o muslim we believe in allah and the olden scriptures i will read out from the glorious quran I, I i take just two more minutes kindly bear with me surah number 2136 i am reading out please say o muslims we believe in allah and that which is revealed unto us and that which was revealed unto abraham and ishmael and isaac and jacob and the tribes and that which moses and jesus received and that which the prophets received from their lord we make no distinction between any of them this is the word of allah and there is one more verse thank you one more verse in surah number 384 in surah number 384 allah tells to the prophet muhammad peace be upon him surah number 3 84 i'm reading out please this will be the last uh, quotation say o muhammad say o muhammad we believe in allah and that which is revealed unto us and that which was revealed unto abraham and ishmael and isaac and jacob and the tribes and that which was what saved unto moses and jesus and the prophets from the their lord 
we make no distinction between any of them because the Quran, the glorious Quran itself tells the Muslims and even the great prophet Muhammad to believe in the scriptures given before Muhammad came. That is the Old Testament and New Testament. Injil mein yakhin karna, Torah mein yakhin karna. So I respect the Holy Quran. I respect the Holy Quran. I obey the Quran in accepting the Bible as the word of God. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Now, inshallah, we shall be having the second session, the second session where Pastor Ophir will speak first for 15 minutes, then Brother Imran will speak for 15 more minutes. I request Pastor Ophir to start the second session with his address for 15 minutes. Pastor Ophir. Dear brothers and sisters, now I would come to the objections and questions raised by my beloved and learned brother, Brother Imran. First of all, I would uh, make a note that there are, according to Brother Imran, there are difficult passages, there are unclean words, there are, uh, I think he is so reverent, not to use that word, but uh, almost like a pornographic language. He was so reverent that he didn't use that word, but uh, some dirty stories and dirty uh, words used in the Bible. So this cannot be. The word of God. That's what he says. Firstly, I would explain that the law was given almost 400 years after the so-called sin of incest, act of incest was committed. At the, at the time of Lot and his daughters, it was 2,000 years before Christ and it was 500 years before Moses. The Bible tells us when the law was not given, sin will not be attributed and there will be no sin. Sin will not be charged, a man cannot be charged as committing sin where there was no law because there must be the law and when you break the law, it is a sin. And the law came 500 years after Lot's incident and 400 years after the Jude and his daughter-in-law's incident. And the second thing is, the Bible doesn't commend it. The Bible doesn't recommend it. The Bible doesn't appreciate it. The Bible doesn't say it is a good thing and you do it. The Bible only records the sin and wrong things committed by those people. So what is the lesson he said, uh, the, Brother Imran, Imran has asked me, what, the lesson is that God is so impartial that he records the sin of even his prophets. That is the lesson for me. I am a servant of God. I left my job in ACIL. I have been serving the Lord, depending upon him for, now, for all my financial needs for 26 years. I have built up more than 350 churches. People consider me as a great servant of Jesus Christ, a theologian, so many things. But if I commit a sin in my secret life, the Lord records it. And on the day of judgment, that will come out. That is the lesson. So the Bible doesn't appreciate or recommend or comment on those uh, feel the incidents. It only is to create a fear in us. If God is speaking so openly about the sin of Lot, Lot's daughters, sin of Judah, and also sin of Noah and other things, sin of David, the prophet, if the Lord is not concealing the sin of David or other prophets, he will not hide my sin also. So that is the lesson. 
and one more thing bastard that word means illegitimate children and that word is used to describe the spiritual stature spiritual condition of the nation of israel because if a child is born out of the legitimate relationship of holy wedlock a child is illegitimately conceived in the mother's womb he will resemble not his father he will resemble like the neighbor parosi ka jaisa dikhta hai ladka this child doesn't look like the father so called father he carries the name of the father but looks like the parosi the neighbor so the people of israel were taking the name of jehovah but behaving like shaitan they have all the bad qualities of shaitan people of israel but they say we are the children of jehovah if you are my children you should be thinking and talking and behaving like me you say yourself that you are my children but you behave like the devil so you are illegitimate children that is the reason god used that word and whatever the word god uses there is a metaphorical meaning to it there is a metaphorical meaning so that is the thing i thirdly i know all the muslim arguments and my brother imran knows all the christian arguments i know what he is going to say and he knows what i am going to say so rightly when uh, the irf has printed the publicity for this uh, this debate debate discussion they said it it is edutainment a wisely coined word educative and entertainment i think you wrote it isn't it so it educates us and also entertains us so it is uh, i love my brother i know what he's going to say and he knows what i'm going to say none of us is uh, so anadi utna masum nahi hai so brother imran uh, after after hearing him i love him more so brothers one thing i will tell you there is a notion how many minutes brother two minutes three minutes five six and half minutes six. Oh, thank you i have lot of time so so there is a notion in the islamic community actually because i have little more time than needed i would say islamic culture pe main to fida hu thank you main to hyderabad hi hu bhai i'm a man from hyderabad and uh, there are so many good things in islam and i am frank enough to say and even my christian brothers and sisters have to uh, learn many things from islamic culture because one of the thank you one of that uh, many important lessons is maintaining a healthy distance between the women and men that's very good that's something to be learned from islam and do could be seekna hai hum seekhne ke liye taiyar hai as my brother mansoor has introduced me i am always able to teach and willing to learn a good teacher is an ever learner once again my brother has ra raised so many questions which i will answer firstly he objected to my statement that i love him he said he cannot love me that he can only have respect for me 
that when uh, God say, speaks something, you should not give a wrong picture or something he was saying. I say, mohabbat to baap bete ke beech mein bhi ho sakta hai, bhai dono bhai bhai ke beech mein mohabbat ho sakta hai, and Bible speaks of brotherly love. Brotherly love. Phileos. That is brotherly love. So I have that kind of a love, not, not a wrong kind of love. And uh, secondly, my brother has raised some questions. If I answer, we'll be deviating from the topic. That is, God, how he has protected the scriptures, he could not protect his own son. He said, that's an intelligent question, but we have an intelligent answer also. That I will proceed to say that the reason God did not protect his son is not because he could not, but because the son had to die for our salvation, he had to shed his precious blood for the remission of our sins. The Bible says there is no remission of sins without the shedding of blood and innocent holy blood. And that triggers a whole new controversy or new topic of discussion. God did protect his scriptures but selectively, intelligently, calculatedly did not protect his son from crucifixion because that was necessary for the salvation of mankind. That is the Christian faith. And my brother said that God records the sin of even his sayings also that I didn't show any evidence, that was because the time was running out. In 2 Corinthians 5th chapter, 10th verse it says, all of us have to stand before the judgment seat of God, judgment seat of Christ, to receive the reward of all our deeds, good and bad. Reporting an incident is not recommending it. God never even said that there is something good, follow them. But later God gave a law that you should not be doing such, such things. So that is no objection for us at all. And, and another thing, my brother said, not a single place Quran says believe in the Bible. He means, the word Bible is not used in the Quran. Bible me yakhin karo karke, nai bataya, Quran Sharif me. That is brother's uh, version, or his argument. But I say, if Allah is mentioning the Torah, Torah and the Prophet's books, and telling you to believe in that, that means the Bible. By Bible we mean, we, we are not insisting that you use the word Bible. You use the word Bible or you don't uh, accept the word Bible, but obey the Quran and believe the books of Moses, believe the books of all the prophets, that is sufficient for us to find the way of salvation. And my brother said, in the whole Bible, never once the word Bible is used. But I have humbly made some study. In the Greek Bible, the word Ta Biblia is used. If you can read John's Gospel, 20th chapter, 30th verse, Acts of Apostle 1, 20 and 7, for it, this is all the Bible references. I cannot uh, prove, I have not proven, I have not given evidences. But what, what evidences are required? What evidences are required? He said, no, I cannot be a Christian Muslim, rather 
Brother Imran can be a Christian Muslim, he said. So whatever way, I welcome him to be that. And I, I think that he is that and I appreciate it. But dear brothers and sisters, I derived that name upon myself that I am a Christian Muslim from the basic meaning of the word Islam in Arabic. In Arabic, the word Islam means total submission to God's will. Then, it is up to us to discover what is the true will of God. After knowing the true will of God, then you can obey the will of God, then only you are a true Muslim. So we are now searching to discover the real will of God, real plan of God, so that we can become real Muslims. And I believe that I have already discovered the real will of God, so I have obeyed the real will of God as understood by my common sense. So I consider myself as following Islam in the true sense of the word. So I submit once again that all my brother's objections are uh, they're, they're sounding like a beautiful music to me and even your applause to his objections. I am enjoying all this. Thank you for encouraging us with your applause. Thank you so much. Respected, learned Christian scholar of the Bible, Pastor Anjit Ophir, respected master of conduct, Brother Mansoor, all my respected elders and all my dear brothers and sisters. I once again welcome all of you with Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Mashallah, I didn't know that sir is so eager to become a Muslim. I'm so happy. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Sir. It's so nice to see that. And sir, as I told you, is very elderly intelligent. He said the word Bible is there. Where is it? In the Greek. So you see, he gave the proof. But sir, people with authority who translated your Bible, they never use that word Bible in the translation. Then, Sir says, Brother Mansoor, when he went to Sir, he brought a book authored by Sir. He said, the ultimate truth concerning the second coming of Jesus. When you open it, the preface, it was so nice to read about Sir. He said, two statements opposing each other can never be true at the same time. If there are two statements that oppose each other, they cannot be true at the same time. In one time, either sir will be fat or thin. He cannot be together. Either sir will be black or white. He cannot be together. Either sir will be man or a woman. He cannot be together. Either Allah will be God or it will be the creation. Creator and creation cannot be together. And, and, Sir said that the topic would have deviated. It will not deviate. Why will it deviate? You said the Bible should be protected. It's the word of God. Torah, Zubur and Injil is the Bible. I challenge you, sir. I gave evidences. You told us. Two opposites cannot contradict. If it is the word of God, how can Moses in a living condition write down? I am dead. I was 120 years old when I died. How can we write down? Then, about the fulfilled prophecies in the Bible. Sir, do you know, Isaiah chapter number 7, verse number 14 is one of the verses in the Bible that the Christians are very strong about it. You see, Isaiah chapter number 7, verse number 14, it prophecy about Jesus Christ, may peace be upon him. It said that a virgin will give birth to a child whose name shall be Emmanuel. Read Gospel of Matthew chapter number 1 verse number 23. And behold the virgin gave birth to a child whose name was Emmanuel. And later that Emmanuel was to be called as Jesus. 
throughout the lifetime and from the Bible, this prophecy is unfulfilled. When was Jesus called as Emmanuel? When was Jesus ever referred as Emmanuel? Not for one single time. If one prophecy is unfulfilled, it's enough to believe that the Bible is not the God's. Well respected sir, he gave a very good statement. Bible is scientific. Sir, from the very first chapter of the Bible alone, from the very opening book of Genesis chapter number one, I can show you nine scientific errors. Not one, not two, nine. If you think it is scientific, I will give you to practice it. Book of Genesis chapter number 1 verse number 29 It says All herbs and shrubs are for you to eat as meat Will you eat poisonous plants? Is it scientific? Allah said in the Quran in Surah Baqarah Surah number 2 and number 168 All lawful and pure things on earth have been made lawful for you to eat Not all things Allah doesn't want even our Christian friends to die Then he said when he said love, I took it in the wrong sense. By God, I would have booked the case against you if I would, I would have taken it in the wrong sense. I said respect. Check the dictionary. Respect is a greater category of loving somebody. I love you with honor. You just love me, but I love you with honor. So I said I respect you. So Alhamdulillah, I didn't take you in the wrong sense, sir. Then, about the Quran, because the time is too less, I don't know whether my master of conduct, if he gives me the permission for the time, sir, discounted, if he would allow me to use it, I would love to share much about Quran and the Bible. <laughs> Definitely with the mutual consent of the sir. Can I use the time that you left for you? With pleasure. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir. Sir has given seven and a half minutes more to Brother Imran, which he has not used during his 15-minute presentation. So Brother Imran will be speaking for 22 and a half minutes. From not 22 and a half minutes? No, total 22 and a half minutes. You have 16 and a half minutes more. Fine. Regarding the Bible, Sir said that this Bible is the Word of God. It cannot have a scientific error in it. Sir, do you know 2 Samuel chapter number 6 verse number 8, book of Proverbs chapter number 9 verse number 6, it says that the earth and the heavens they had pillars. Is it scientific? Do earth and heavens have pillars? No. Allah said in the Quran, in Surah Luqman, Surah number 31 and number 10, don't you look at the creation of the heavens and the earth, for we created them without any support. If you read the first book of Genesis, chapter number 1, verse number 16, 1, 6, it says, God created two great lights, the sun and the moon, and both giving their own light. Do sun and moon give their own lights? They don't. The happy word used there is, if translated into English, it means an object giving its own light. The Quran says in Surah Yunus, Surah number 10, Ayah number 5, Surah Furqan, Surah number 25, Ayah number 61. Allah refers to the light of the sun as Siraj. Siraj means an object that gives its own light. And to the light of the moon, Allah refers it as Munir, meaning a reflected light, an object with a reflected light. And still, sir, does not want to believe in a book which is more scientific. <laughs> Regarding the glorious Quran being the word of God. All this time I have been discussing about the Bible, Bible, Bible. Not to abuse the Christians. Wallah, not to abuse the Christians. Being a Muslim, I can't do that. I read it only to invite my Christian friends to ponder on what is being read to you. What is being said to you. This Bible, since the day one, when the Quran was revealed to us, the Quran is the only scripture of any kind on the face of the earth that is revealed religiously, that can be memorized, 
by a small child of six years to an elderly person 60 plus. No other book, no other book except the Quran. This is the miracle of the Quran. So I said about the incest cases, I forgot that point. One very good point he said. He said, you see, these cases of incest, God is so honest that he referred these cases of incest about the prophets in order to show to the people, don't do it. That don't do it is self-worship. From the Bible, you quote it from 2 Corinthians. You see, people don't know about it. 2 Corinthians is not in the Old Testament. It is a book written much after Jesus Christ, but peace be upon him. The crime was committed much before Musa alayhi salam. And the correction comes much after Musa alayhi salam. And then sir said that those sins that have been committed were before the law. Law was not given to Moses. The Hebrew word is Torah, Arabic Torah, meaning the law, Sharia. Allah said in Surah Maida, Surah number 5, Ayah number 48 and 49, to every community we gave a particular Sharia, a law to follow accordingly. To us, the glorious Quran in accordance with the fear of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Sahaba Akram is the Sharia for us. This is our Sharia. To every community, Allah gave a Sharia. Sir said, those cases were committed when the law was not there. I would like to ask you, sir, according to your own statement, two statements cannot contradict and be true at the same time. If the law is revealed later and sins committed before are not to be taken into accountability, why do you take the original sin of Adam and Eve into accountability? They committed the sin before they came on out. And then I gave a challenge to sir. He said, Quran says believe in the Bible. He didn't show it to me. He didn't show it to me yet. I gave another challenge. Read Ezekiel chapter number 23, verse number 3, 8, 20 and 21. He didn't read it. And all about one hour that he used, he gave only his own explanations, not supported by the Bible. I believe in a Quran. I believe in a Quran where I am too weak. It's the Quran that gives me the strength and evidences that it is Al-Haq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said in Surah Bani Israel, Surah number 17, Ayah number 81, وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقْ وَذَهَقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُقَ Say to them that the truth has arrived and falsehood has perished for falsehood is bound to perish. And I can scientifically prove to you that this Quran is the word of God. Scientifically. Time does not permit me. I can give a complete one and a half hour lecture only about scientific facts in the Quran. Science, in fact, is not as advanced as the, as the Quran because there are more than 200 ayah in the Quran that deal with medical science. The science does not say anything about them. It cannot disprove them. It cannot prove them. Science is backward to the Quran. Logical, scientific test. I will give it to all of you and present it to honorable, respected sir. I can recollect from my memory, he also quoted one more thing. He said that apocrypha is canonical gospels. I'm sorry, I'm again going back, tracking myself back, but it's important. I have so many Christian friends. Otherwise, they will tell Allah that this fellow, this fellow knew about Bible more than Pastor Ranjit Ophir. Then why didn't tell us? So honestly, I have to speak it out now. He said canonical, apocrypha. These two words, who understood it? How many of you understood it? Apocrypha, canonical. Who knows about it? Do you know, sir, apocrypha does not mean canonical. Apocrypha, if checked into Oxford Dictionary, it means of, of doubtful origin. Yes. Catholics believe in a Bible with seven books more than what the sir believes in the Bible to be the word of God. And about those seven books that the Catholics believe, Protestant Christians say they are apocrypha, meaning they are of doubtful origin. They doubt on the word of God that the Christians believe to be the word of God. 
and he said canonical what is canonical canonical means upon which the great scholars agreed that these are the words of god what are the canonical gospels in the bible gospel of matthew gospel of mark gospel of luke gospel of john actually it is not gospel of matthew mark luke and john it is gospel according to matthew ask sir why according to he says there is no evidence that matthew wrote it gospel according to john why according to there is no evidence that john wrote it gospel according to luke why luke because there is no evidence that luke wrote it and the same with mark but for us allah gave a test theory of exhausting alternative test suppose i hold this watch in my hand and i say this is pastor ranjit ofir nobody believes it you know you say imran has gone full what is he saying there is a watch in my hand what are you saying so now for you to correct me that this is a watch and not pastor ranjit ofir you will have to know two things you will have to know how pastor ranjit ofir is and you will also have to know what a watch is allah gave theory of exhausting alternative tests of similar kind in the quran in several places allah said that this is a revelation from allah subhanahu wa taala the almighty god if somebody says it is not a revelation of allah they will have to say two things if this is not the revelation of allah then what is it they will have to prove it not just say and they will also have to say how should be the revelation of allah i do not believe in a revelation of allah that uses fiddly word like b a s t a r d i will not believe anything which is unscientific to be from god so now they will have to prove allah referred in the quran this challenge in several places allah says in surah anam surah number 6 ayah number 19 in surah anam surah number 6 ayah number 92 in surah yusuf surah number 12 ayah number 1 2 and 3 in surah taha surah number 20 ayah number 13 in surah naml surah number 27 ayah number 6 allah refers in surah sajda surah number 32 ayah number 1 2 and 3 in surah jasiya surah number 45 ayah number 2 in surah rahman surah number 55 ayah number 1 and 2 in surah waqia surah number 56 and number 78 79 and 80 allah says in surah insan surah number 76 and number 23 in all these places allah said that this is a revelation from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if anybody says this is not from allah he will have to prove it then from where is it and he will also have to prove how should the revelation of allah be and by god since 1425 years this challenge is standing and nobody could disprove the quran to be the word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and finally allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said surah maida surah number 5 ayah number 82 and 83 he quoted that muslims are very close to the christians but you see the christians don't take it that way anywhere in the world if the muslims are suffering it's in the hands of the christians directly or indirectly and they both that they believe in the prince of peace jesus christ may peace be upon him they both that they believe in jesus christ the prince of peace practically they don't do it we muslims we are labeled as terrorists but wallah we are the most peace loving community on the face of the earth <laughs> by god why why we don't believe in the prince of peace but we be- believe in the king of peace muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah testified that prophet muhammad is the king of peace in surah anbiya surah number 21 ayah number 107 wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin oh prophet we sent you not but as a mercy to the whole of humanity Five minutes or one minute? We have five minutes more. Mashallah. <laughs> And I would like to finally, before I give the last presentation, read out. This is the King James version, printed in 1611 on the authority of King James, the authorized version of the Bible. And then what happened? You see, if you read this revised standard version, Brother Mansoor, can you please? Pass it over to sir. This Bible it has a preface. Preface. Preface means the people who published it they wrote something about it. In the preface, sir, I am quoting verbatim from your Bible. Read it. In the preface, paragraph number 
6 and paragraph number 7, 5, 6 and 7, it says this book. That Bible is talking about this Bible now. It says, that Bible says, the King James Version has with good reason been termed as the noblest monument of English prose. Look at the nobility of the King James Version. It speaks the word B-A-S-T-A-R-D. Noblest monument of the English prose. The revisers in 1881, when the revisers of this Bible in the year 1881 expressed admiration for it. The revisers of this Bible in the year 1881 expressed admiration for its simplicity, its dignity, its power, its happy turns of expressions, the music of, it, of its cadences. I am reading what that sir, you can check it. The music of its cadences, the felicities of its rhythm, it has entered, as no other book has, into the making of personal character and public institutions of English-speaking peoples. Great praise for this book. But now, the book that I gave to, the Bible that I gave to Pastor Anjitofir, the next paragraph, verse number 7, the paragraph number 7, it says, wait for the shock, all of you wait for the shock. Simplicity, dignity, power, Everything is there. Next para it says, yet, yet, it has grave defects. <laughs> Who says that? I didn't say that. Muslims didn't say that. Quran didn't say that. 32 eminent scholars of Christianity and Pastor Ranjit Ophir was not one of them. 32 eminent scholars of Christianity. That the 50 denominations, they say, it has grave defects. Paragraph number 7, the defects are so many and so serious that they require a revision. Who is revising the God's word? Human beings are revising the God's word. Who is correcting the God's word? Human beings are correcting the God's word. Yet it is the unchanged God's word. We believe in the Quran about which Allah testified. Falsehood can neither approach it from above nor from below. Neither from right nor from the left. The one who revealed it, he shall protect it. And finally, in order to help Pastor Ranjit Ophir accept what I have been conveying, and come forward and honestly utter in front of all of you Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu wa la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu I have made the task easy for him He has been defending the Bible to be the God's word This is the Holy Bible. On one side, the chapters of the Bible are written. The chapters, the names of the books in the Bible are written. And on the other side, the authors of the books are written. Sir said, what is the question? No more questions, sir. I am answering. <laughs> My statement was, you are protecting the Bible to be the word of God, defending it. Your Bible, authorized Bible writers, for all the books they have given, on the side I have written the names of the authors that they have put in the Bible. Yeah. For one single book, God is not the author. And here are the surah names of the glorious Quran.
With this, I would like to conclude my talk by reciting an ayat from Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, ayat number 79, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Auzu billahi minash shaitan rajim, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Fawailun min ladhina yaktubun al-kitaba bi-aydihim, thumma yaquluna hadha min indillah, liyashtaru bihi samanan khalila. Fawailun min ladhina yaktubun bi-aydihim, wawailun min ladhina mimma yaksibun. Vow to them, curse be upon them, who write a book with their own hand, and then claim it is from Allah, so that they earn a miserable price out of it. Then vow to what their hands have written, and vow to what they earn as a profit from it. Sir, I have no question to ask you because I want to know the chapter number 23, verse number 3, 8, 20 and 21. Can you read it sir for me? I have never read the Bible. I would uh, say, say here that the Bible has spoken about the man and woman relationship in a metaphorical way as the relationship between God and he says, this is a difficult thing to understand the people who have not yet found the true way of salvation. Once you find the way of salvation, then you have the power to understand the scripture. So it is, he said, in Ezekiel 23rd chapter, Israel and Judah, both the nations are symbolical, they are, they are uh, symbolically spoken as two women, Living illicit life. God is spoken of as the husband. I have questions for Brother Imran Kareem. If anybody has questions for Brother Imran, they have to go. God is the husband, and the Israel and Judah nations, they are his wives. It's all allegorical language. So, Brother Ohola, Oholiba, they are allegorically signifying the Israel and uh, uh, Judah. And all the things, even we, the practical facts of life, we don't speak with children. If a little child comes and asks you, Daddy, how I was born, you won't tell him. So many secrets. It's not sin, but you cannot tell a child. These chapters are the word of God, but cannot be read out to people who are not saved. I finish my answer. This is Mr. Shanta Kumar. I'm a Christian pursuing my master's in religions and I'm also an evangelist. Historically, Jewish and Christian have earlier documents. The Quran has some similar stories in the book. Then how can it be a revelation rather than a copied book? Before I answer the brother about his question, with all apologies to all of you, because all of you are eager to learn, I would read out what is Ezekiel 3, 8 and 20, 21. Ezekiel, chapter number 23, verse number 3. And they committed whoredoms. In Egypt, they committed whoredoms in their youth. There were their breasts pressed and there they bruised the teats of their virginity. Teats, according to Oxford Dictionary, means nipples. Verse number 8. Neither left she her wardens, brought from Egypt, for in youth they lay with her, and they bruised the breasts of her virginity, and poured their wardom upon her. Verse number 20 and 21. For she doted upon their paramours, whose flesh, paramours, you know what is a paramour? Aurat ke liye sotan hoti hai. Agar koi aadmi dousri aurat se ish lada hai to kahenge ke is aurat ki ye sotan hai. Agar aurat kisi aur mat se shohar ke bajaye. Beside the husband if the wife falls in love with some other man, that is the paramour. So it says, for she doted upon their paramours whose flesh 
is as the flesh of asses asses you know donkeys whose flesh is as the flesh of asses and whose issue issue you know what is issue issue means the genital organ of the male whose issue is like the issue of horses thus you call us them to remember the lewdness of your youth in bruising your teeth by the egyptians for the taps of your youth are these the word of god are these the words of god wallah god cannot speak like this and coming to brother brother said that because torah zabur and injil were revealed before the quran so therefore quran has been copied from the torah zabur and the injil common allegation by the christians you see muhammad has copied from torah zabur and the injil you have come forward to ask a question but do you know when was the bible translated into arabic the prophet did not know any language except arabic the old testament of the bible was translated into arabic for the first time in 900 christian era the prophet passed away in 610 christian era after the demise of the prophet 200 years after the prophet the old testament was translated into arabic and the new testament was translated into arabic by aprilius in the year 1566 that is more than 700 years after the death of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam how can he copy it then the second part this bible was brought into this format very lately at the time of prophet it was not in this form for the prophet to read and copy it thirdly because you can pre program you are prejudiced see something i should ask against the quran you are sleeping in my lecture why i will give you the evidence what is cheating suppose if i am cheating from professor ranji tofir in the examination for any answer that ranji tofir writes wrong if he gives an answer wrong if i am cheating i will also put it wrong the bible says sun and moon have their own light the prophet corrected no the bible says you can eat anything even if you eat poisonous herbs and shrubs you won't die according to the bible prophet said no eat only lawful and good things the bible said heavens and the earth they have got pillars prophet said no heavens and earth are without pillars is this copying this is not copying this is correcting the prophet corrected the bible but if you give me the time i will also explain some passages that are same in you can have a debate with my student i will arrange that you arrange me next time as a speaker i will yeah, come no, no. My, my students will do it man yeah. your scholar didn't do it so tell me sir this is my challenge you arrange me as a session i would face a debate with your students okay thank you very much i'll give you a blank check fill it up okay i will give you a blank check fill that's, it up that's very check and anywhere in it okay This question is for Pastor Ofer. And my name is Yamini. I'm a housewife. Uh, I just want to know why you didn't answer the question about Prophet Moses' authorship. To write down all the books of the Bible and the names of the uh, authors opposite to the books, and uh, he has taken all the surahs in the Quran and then opposite it, he has written the name Allah as the only author. he has taken great pains to do that but nowhere in the bible or in the christian doctrine or faith or statement of faith we believe that god took a pen and wrote down all the words of the bible we never say we say that god has inspired the prophets and prophets have written so he has wasted his time and energy in showing me that the uh, opposite each uh, book there is a prophet there is a prophet yes yes brother we believe god has inspired the prophets to write the books of the bible and then then comes the authorship of moses and we agree that moses speaks about 
himself as though he is speaking in the uh, about somebody else that is the way the prophets speak in second corinthians 12th chapter apostle paul speaks about a certain man being taken up into the third heaven i take pride in him he went into god's paradise third heaven heard the unutterable things and all those things and he is taking pride in him if somebody else goes to the paradise why should paul be proud actually it is about paul only but he was speaking as though in the third person that is the fashion of the prophets and then we believe that the end of the book of deuteronomy last chapter was not written by moses but by joshua and now i announce the christian faith we do not really bother the one who took the pen and wrote but we bother about the one who inspired the people if i write a book you don't ask me whether i wrote with reynolds pen with fountain pen or ball pen or something else i write i write 40 i take 40 pens to finish a novel but the pens are insignificant immaterial but the hand who took the pen is that is important and the god who spoke through all the 40 prophets we are bothered about that god and we don't believe that god has taken a pen the prophet has taken a pen and which prophet doesn't matter for us as long as we know god has spoken it thank you very much says that the name of God is Jehovah. Jehovah. In Quran, the name of God is not given. Allah means on, only God. How can the book of this nameless God be the word of God? Sister, thank you very much. You have asked a very important question that time did not permit me to discuss in my lecture. Jazakallah khair, sister. Thank you very much. But before I again give the answer, Sir is not bothered who wrote it because Sir does not know who wrote it. No Christian on the face of the earth knows who wrote those books. They give it the name of Prophet Joshua, Prophet Joseph, Judah, Jacob, hundred names they give, but there is not a single authentic evidence to prove that truly they wrote it. The original manuscripts that the Christian world today boasts of. They say we have got the original manuscripts. What are the original manuscripts? They say written in Hebrew, in Greek. So when were they written, sir? They say they were written at the time of Jesus. I already challenged you. I said at the time of Jesus, not even a doo was put. Dig, dig, strict, scratch, dot, an iota, full stop, nothing, no comma, nothing. When was it written? According to all the authentic sources, the original manuscripts that the Christians have today can be dated back 300 years after Jesus Christ, my peace be upon him. Not before that. The most original authentic sources for Christian scriptures are the Vatican Codex, the Semiotic Codex, and the Alexandrian Codex. Alexandrian Codex belongs to the 5th century. The Vatican and the Sinaitic, according to them, to the 4th century, early 4th century. Who wrote it down? Nobody knows it. So therefore nobody is bothered. According to your own logic, sir, I am telling you, according to your own logic, when you are discussing the case of incest, you gave a beautiful explanation to the people and you said, see if the child is born with another face of the neighbor's face, it becomes a problem. So identity of the child becomes so much important, identity of the word of God is not important. Identity of the child who is the true father becomes so important. But the identity of the word of God, whoever writes it, no problem. We are ready to take it, wholesale. And thank you very much sir for considering my pain that I took to write down the chart. I took it with sincere devotion and prayer to Allah that if that would have made you to understand the truth, I would have been the, the most honorable person on earth today. 
ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಅಲ್ಲ ಫಜಕ್ಕಿರ್ ಇನ್ನಮ ಅಂತ ಮುಜಕ್ಕಿರ್ ಲಸ್ತ ಅಲೈ ಹಿಂಬಿ ಮುಸೈತಿರ್ ಮೈ ಜಾಬ್ ಇಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಟು ಕನ್ವೇ ಯು ಆಂಡ್ ಟು ಕನ್ವೇ ಎವರಿಬಡಿ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಟು ಕನ್ವರ್ಟ್ ಎನಿಬಡಿ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಟು ಕನ್ವೇ ದ ಹಿದಾಯ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ देयर ಇಫ್ ಅಲ್ಲಾ ವಿಲ್ಸ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಕಮ್ ಫಾರ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಯು ಲೀವ್ ಟು ರೀಡ್ ಲಾ ಇಲಾಹ ಇಲ್ಲಲ್ಲಾ ಮುಹಮ್ಮದ ರಸೂಲ್ ಇನ್ಶಾ ಅಲ್ಲಾ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದ ಕ್ವೆಶ್ಚನ್ ಪೋಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಸಿಸ್ಟರ್ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗಾಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಬೈಬಲ್ ಇಸ್ Yehova or Jehova, Yahweh or Jehova. But in the Quran, it's only Allah. Sister, the word J is a Latin word. It's neither Greek nor is it Hebrew. Alphabet J, Jehova. J is Latinized version of the name Yahweh. Yahweh, what is Yahweh? So they say Yahweh is the Almighty God. Does Yahweh mean the Almighty God? They say no. Then what is the name? If you open the Bible, if you read your Hebrew text sister, it's Elohim. Eloh, Arabic Ilah. Eloh, Ilah. Why in there? In Hebrew language, I am is added to a name or any other word to give more respect to it. Eloh, Elohim. Eloh, Hebrew and Arabic are sister languages, very common to each other. Eloh, Eloh, Yahweh, Yahayun. We call Allah Yahayun, Yahweh. Eloh, Eloh. The confusion came into the minds of the people previously when they were calling only God. Who is the God? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear. Call, my son read it. My son read it for all of you. He conveyed the message to all of you. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Surah Ikhlas, Surah number 112, and number 1, 2, 3, and 4. Call. They are asking you, who is the God? Say to them, who Allah, who Ahad. He is Allah, the only one God. Allah, who is Saman. He is independent. My daughter translated it. He is independent. He does not depend upon anyone. Allah, who is Saman. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He has no parents. He does not beget children. It's a human work. It's a lower animal function to beget children. God doesn't do it. Allah said in the Quran, in Surah, Rahma, Surah Maryam, Surah number 19, and number 88, 89, 90, and 92. Rahman walada. And they say that the most gracious has begotten a son. Lakad jaitum shayyan idda. It's the dirtiest thing that anyone can utter against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to say that Allah has an illegitimate child. Lakad jaitum shayyan idda. Takadu samawati yatafattarna hu minhu. If we give the sense of what they utter against the Almighty God Allah, the heaven will burst upon them. Patan chakun ardu. The earth will split open and take them inside. وَتَقِرُّ الْجِبَالُ حَبْدَى The mountains will fall down in utter ruin. Why? أَنْدَوْ لِلْرَّحْمَانِ وَلَدَى Because they boasted and they said that the most gracious has begotten a son. Therefore, can you be a little quiet? You are disturbing. You are distracting. Allah reacted and said, Allah does not beget children. And then, you see the miracle of the Quran? See, choice of word is very important. Sir said that the incest cases are metaphorically mentioned, but the results were practical. Cases have been mentioned metaphorically. Results came practically. And he said, prophecy is fulfilled. Do you know another prophecy is unfulfilled when I quote it? I forgot it. Thank you, sister, for reminding me. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 23, verse number 2, where it says, B-A-S-T-A-R-D, till their 10th generation should not enter into the temple of the God. I told you about the genealogy given of Jesus in Matthew chapter number 1, verse number 3. There, the Pares, they made it, it's Pares in Old Testament, it became Pares here, so that the scent, the original scent of the name doesn't go to anybody. Pares becomes Pares. And this Pares, he is not from the 10th generation of that illegitimate child. He is before that. Again, Bible's prophecy is unfulfilled. Now, in the Quran, there is one attribute that is constantly used in the Bible to refer to the Almighty God. The Father. Abba. Abba. 
ربنا ہمارے باپ ہمارے ابا اور فادر پروفیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے اللہ نیو اللہ نیو سر واز رائٹ اللہ نوز آل دا فیوچر اللہ نیو دیٹ پیپل آر لٹرلی ٹیکنگ دا ورڈ فادر سو اللہ سبحانہ و تعالیٰ میڈ پروفیٹ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ڈیلیٹ دا ورڈ فادر فرام دا قرآن انسٹیڈ آف ابنا اللہ گیو دا بیوٹیفل ورڈ رب بنا اور لارڈ ناٹ اوور فادر اور چیریشر ناٹ اوور فادر رب بنا ناٹ اب بنا رب بنا بٹ ہو از دس رب بنا اللہ ہو از اللہ کین یو کال اللہ بائی اینی نیم نو یو کانٹ کال کین آئی کال اینی بڈی سیٹنگ یور ریسپیکٹیڈ ایل دا پیسو رنجی تو پھر ہی ہیز گاٹ ہز آئیڈینٹیفیکیشن آئی کین ناٹ کال ہم ٹامی جولی اینی تھنگ He has his own identification. If I can't call him by that name, I can't call God by any name. Allah said in the glorious Quran in Surah Bani Israel, Surah number 17, number 110, Khuledu Allah Abidu Rahman, Ayyamma Tatoof Alahul Asma'ul Husna. Call upon him Allah, or call upon him the most gracious. All the most beautiful names belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not corrupted names. Jesus is not Allah. The moment you say Isa, Jesus, you get a picture of a creation, not the creator. Ar-Rahman, it's a perfect name. Eloh, Yahweh, Jehovah are not the perfect names of Almighty God. Allah, the perfect name. Allah is derived from the root Arabic word Elah. Elohim, Elah. From Elah, it's Allah. Our kalima is La ilaha. There is no God. Allah, Allah, except the God. Who is the God? Allah, Al-Ilah. Who is this Al-Ilah? Ilah, the Arabic word, has got basically six meanings. One of them is Al-Malu. What is Al-Malu? Al-Malu means the Almighty God towards whom the whole creation rushes in utter love for their own peace. Ilah means One who cannot be seen by the creation. Ilah means one who is the most loving and benevolent. Ilah means one about whose power you are told you become amazed at it. Ilah means one towards whom the creation rushes at times of love, peace as well as at times of problems. For us Muslims, If suppose my sister, her match is fixed, uski shadi hone wali hai, the moment I get this news, I will say Alhamdulillah. All praises are to Allah. If I get a job, I say Alhamdulillah. All praises are to Allah. If my mother dies, I say Inna Lillahi wa Inna Ilaihi Rajiun. Everything belongs to Allah and everyone will return to Allah. Inna. Inna means the one towards whom the creation rushes at times of love and at times of problems. That is Ilah. From Elohim sister, it becomes Yahweh. From Yahweh, it becomes Jehovah. From Jehovah, it become, became Jesus. All corrupted forms. Even Jesus, imagine. Jesus Christ, my peace be upon him. Wallah, I'm telling you, Wallah. It will be a news for my Christian friends here. Wallah, Jesus Christ, my peace be upon him himself, never heard the word Jesus for him. Eshau, Isau, Isa. Not Jesus, but. So we say, we take a very precaution while calling the Almighty God Allah. And if you want to call Allah by any other name, most welcome, as long as the attribute and the name you call Allah with should be absolute and perfect. It should not be corrupted. When we say Ilah, his power should amaze everybody. When you say Ilah, you should not get a picture where the God is on the cross crying, Allah, 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 Oh God, Oh God, why have you forsaken me and then I am the God? This is not the imagination of God. Allah, that is Allah, the one who is most powerful, who is no, no other Ilah is near him. All other Ilah are false gods. I hope I answered your question, sister.
Brother Ofer, I would like to ask from the Bible and the Quran. Please, no logical answer. You have to quote from Bible or else from the Quran. What a Christian should practice to be a Muslim or a, what a Muslim should practice to be a Muslim? Who is going to enter in heaven? Because you have a debate with Brother Imran that you are telling Bible is the word of God, Brother Imran is telling Quran is the word of God. You have to quote who is going to be in heaven after practicing a Christian, after practicing as an Islamic teaching. He says, who will enter heaven? Who will enter heaven? And actually that is not within the context, but still I will answer. According to the Bible, there are five great facts of God's way of plan, plan of salvation. That is, first fact is man is a sinner by birth. Second, he cannot atone for his own sins. Third thing, a holy blood, sinless blood sacrifice is necessary for the forgiveness of sins. And fourth fact is, if the sins are not forgiven, people will go to hell. The fifth great fact is, God himself sent Jesus Christ to die for our sins. And without the shedding, Hebrews 9th chapter 22 says, there is no remission of sins without the shedding of blood. And Christ came to shed his blood for our remission of sins. And as a Christian, I am not forcing this upon anyone to believe this. As a Christian, I believe, the Bible says, I believe, that people washed in the blood of Jesus will enter into heaven. And then, you said, I have to quote from Quran. I quote from Quran that Allah said, follow what I have given to Jesus, Moses and other prophets. And Jesus, Moses and other prophets, they have all said that there is a need for the holy precious blood in order for the human sin to be forgiven. Everywhere, many places in the Quran, it says, you follow the reminder given to Moses. If I have to read out from the Quran, I will read out from Surah 21 and 48. And we verily gave Moses and Aaron the criterion of right and wrong and a light and a reminder for those who keep from evil. And this reminder, this light Allah gave to Moses also says that without shedding of blood there is no remission of sins. So by the combined testimony of the glorious Quran and the Holy Bible, I believe that people whose sins are washed in the blood of Jesus will be there in heaven. Thank you for the question, brother. Brother, insulting is very easy, brother, but uh, question, with love, you should tell the truth. That is the teaching of the Bible. Question. My question is, if the problem is only with pronunciation and recitation, what is the necessity to rewrite the Quran, number one? Number two, if already written material, that is Quran, is correct, why they were burnt out? If they burnt out, it means the problem was with the material but not the recitation. And moreover, according to Bukhari Sahih value Brother, 6... Thank you very much. No, here, just a minute. You are voting 201 next. No, 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 514. Okay. Here, Mama says, Quran is revealed in seven different ways of recitation. According to this, Uthman has did wrong. Who have given the authority to Uthman to do that? Brother has asked a question. 
and he said insulting is easy and you think you are respecting <laughs> see giving those statements boss it's very easy don't give those statements ask your question directly a debate means an argument everything as long as it doesn't contradict quran and hadith as long as it doesn't contradict the constitution of india there is no problem so if you come don't insult i feel insulted when somebody says quran is it has been burned it is interpolated so should i cry with you now no no i want it you said the message of the bible is peace gospel of matthew chapter number 10 verse number 34 do you know about it gospel of matthew chapter number 10 verse number 34 See the Christians believe Jesus Christ may peace be upon him to be very peace loving he said i have come to love peace that is the message in the bible in the direct speech of jesus gospel of matthew chapter number 10 verse number 34 christ says think not that i am come to spread peace on earth i am not come to spread peace but a sword see i was respecting i didn't insult i didn't quote it till now But now, when you allege the way you did it, I have to enforce. Christ says in Gospel of Luke, chapter number nineteen, verse number twenty-one and twenty-seven, "Whoever does not believe in me, bring him in front of me, slay him, kill him." Allah said in the Quran, "La ikraha fi din." There is no compulsion in religion. If he doesn't believe, no problem. La kumdina kumaliya din. Your religion is with you. Mine is with me. I will not slay you. Coming to your main question, he has quoted a common Christian allegation that at the time of Usman Razi Allahu Taala Anhu, and he quoted a hadith from Sahih Bukhari, volume number six, hadith number five hundred nine, five hundred ten, and five hundred fourteen. I doubt uh, uh, volume number six, hadith number five nine, five nine, uh, five hundred ten, and five hundred fourteen. Am I right? That is what you gave as references. I don't know which edition you are following. In new edition, it's volume number six, hadith number two hundred one. Anyway. You said that if recitation is the problem, why did Usman Razi Allah Taala who burn the copies of the Quran? But the, the history of it is, after the demise of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there was a battle fought. In that battle, at the time of Abu Bakr Siddiq Razi Allah Taala who may Allah be pleased with him, in that battle, seventy Hufaz Quran, memorizers of the Quran, they were martyred. They were killed in that battle. Umar ibn Khattab of proposes a suggestion to Abu Bakr Siddiq, and he says, "Ya Amir al-Mu'minin, O you leader of the believers, let us bring all the copies on which the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet, used to write it down when the Prophet spoke it to them, and let us put it in one place as a compilation. And this work of compilation, collecting all the copies, how was it written down? At that time, there was no printing press." At that time, there were no papers like we have A4 size, A3 size. How was it written down on parches, on the bones of the hips of the camels? It was written down. What Abu Bakr Siddiq did is he asked them to collect all that material and bring it in one place. Once it was brought to him, what Abu Bakr did is he made an official copy of it and said, "Let it be preserved with Hafsa Razi Allah Taala." It was preserved with Hafsa Razi Allah Taala. At the time of Usman Razi Allah Taala, you need to know a little of Islamic history. It's not your problem. That is what you have been taught all these years in the churches, or wherever you learnt it from, whatever books you learnt it. If you read the Islamic history, the history says in the Caliphate of Umar ibn Khattab, eleven thousand acres of land was conquered by the Muslim Sahaba Kram, and almost the same number of land was conquered at the time of Usman Razi Allah Taala. a new problem started after that what was the problem the problem was people who were not arabs he has just copied it official copy of the quran so that is the official copy of the quran not the official author of the quran he has just copied it official copy of the quran so that the non arabs also if they read it if they read it in different ways it's not a problem the caliph the arab caliph the companion of the prophet has authorized it officially and no arab of that time no arab of that time and not talking about the muslim arabs no non muslim arab of the time of usman and ali they came up with this allegation 1425 years back or later these people have come to that
the non muslim arabs who lived at the time of usman zira don they did not have this problem and the other part is for the sake of argument suppose may allah forbid if the enemies of islam and enemies of quran they burn away all the copies of the quran you burn away one million times with the help of the huffaz we will reproduce it one million times but if if only the edition the version is changed you do not know what was the previous version the original this is the beauty of the quran you see the one i gave to sir and so honest the arabic part is written there arabic with english show me any bible in the world which has from the original greek manuscript the greek written and then the translation from the original manuscript the hebrew written and then the translation of it and and the hebrew that is he i know sir is getting a little emotional no no sir pull down i am a very good person like you thank you very much sir i thought i was wrong see i don't know the hebrew the same answer you answer in the same part the hebrew and greek that you post as original translations are not the originals of the time of moses and jesus christ but from the vulgate latin version they were translated into hebrew and greek and that today you believe to be the original from there you have all the versions here so therefore sir at the time when usman burnt it away nobody got a problem you know why there were memorizers of the quran show me one non muslim arab of his time who came with this complaint and said they have seen the quran i challenge you show me one non muslim arab of the time of usman ibn al talal who came to say they have seen the quran 14 25 years later you have the quran and and for the sake of argument because it's a debate just for the sake of debate i agree for the sake of argument wallah i don't for the sake of argument i agree that the quran we have is the one produced by usman then i think only a disciple of prophet an ummati of prophet wrote a book without a mistake that god wrote with mistakes i hope i said it is the bible speaks about falsification test for a true christian believer in mark chapter 16th verse 17 and 18 sir one of the test says that if a true christian believer drinks deadly poison he won't die how is this possible did you try this any time why not in front of us to prove that the bible is scientific before answering this question i would uh, remind the event managers and i would inform my respected audience when this debate was being planned we almost discussed for 3 months before the month of ramzan began almost 3 4 months we had discussed mr brother afaq and brother mansoor had come to my place taken great pains to come to me and call me when we were deciding on the format of the debate as half an hour one person and the half an hour second person talks 15 minutes 15 minutes 15 15 minutes when they were proposing the format i said if anyone talks as the last one the other one may have an answer but he doesn't have time he cannot demolish what is being said then there was a long time we were thinking of this format finally i have invited brother imran also to personally meet me and we met in a common meeting point and he also agreed yes brother of you that's a difficulty for both the party if, if i speak the last you don't have time to answer if you speak the last i don't have time to answer someone has to suffer that way and finally we wanted to have the debate in any case we said there is no losing or winning the battle it's only educative each one presents his own point of view and the people this uh, elite uh, people cream of the society they will decide right and wrong and i now submit before you humbly 
that all the questions raised by our dear brother Imran, they have an answer. Never dream, never dream that we, these questions did not occur to us. These questions have occurred to us and we fasted, we prayed about it and God revealed us a truth. Then we carried on. So never dream that we, these things, we, we never thought about that. Now, sister's question. As we have read the Bible hundreds of times and asked the Lord the true meaning about it, the Lord has revealed us that the scripture was given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and the scripture must be applied to persons and situations according to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, not literally applying everything to everybody. That is the Christian concept. For example, God has given certain gifts to some people, certain other gifts to some people. And all the scriptures quoted are pertaining a different situation in the history, different situation in society. As my brother said, I have come to send sword. I did not come to give peace, he said. And that sword again, the Bible explains, as a two-edged sword of the word of God. When the word of God is sent into this world, in this world, a dunya mein jab khuda ka kalam bijaya jata hai, it cuts the heart of the people and blesses them and makes them holy. So that is the metaphorical meaning. And my brother also said that illegitimate relationship is metaphorical, but uh, result is practical. No brother, result also is metaphorical. That was wrong statement. Result was metaphorical also. The children of Israel resembling somebody else is a metaphorical language. And this, a person drinking deadly poison yet not being harmed, according to the church history, Apostle John was given deadly poison and so many cases are there in history. And we do not blindly go with the letter of the Bible, we go with the spirit of the Bible. Geharai jo hai, inner meaning jo hai. Just because the Bible says, do this, for example, you go and do likewise. There is a Bible verse in the Bible. And when Judas Iscariot, he got uh, hanged himself, the Bible says, you do, go and do likewise. We don't do that. Every verse is not applicable to every man. This is, to put it in, in short, in the Bible, every verse is not applicable to everybody. It requires divine wisdom, enlightenment to understand the words of the Bible, where to apply, when to apply. Once again I repeat, to get any wisdom, to know the true meaning of the Bible, you must get into peace with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's my answer. Honor them and not be bitter against them. But in Quran, chapter 434, we find the God of Quran asking to be the wife. So this God of Quran who speaks exactly opposite to what the God of Bible says can never be the same true God. So his word, Quran can never be called the true word of God. Please comment. I give the answer to sister. Sir said about metaphorical terms and metaphorical results. They are not practical, they are metaphorical. He said it's all metaphorical. Alhamdulillah, he has come one more step closer to Islam now. If it is literal, then Jesus will have a progeny of an illegitimate child. If it is metaphorical, according to Matthew chapter number 1 verse number 3, Jesus is born miraculously to Virgin Mary. 
and we Muslims say he is born miraculously to Virgin Mary without any male intervention or any other intervention. Allah said in Ali Imran Surah number 3, number 49 and 50, فَإِذَا خَلَىٰ أَمْرًا فَإِنَّمَا يَقُلُّ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُنْ For anything that Allah decides to do, He just says to it, be and it is. And Allah said in Ali Imran Surah number 3, number 59, the similitude of Jesus in the sight of Allah is, is like the similitude of Adam, may peace be upon him. For as Allah created Adam from dust, so did Allah create Jesus from dust. So Alhamdulillah, very good sir, you have come closer to Islam, Ahlan wa sahlan. Sister Hala has a question. In, in Corinthians, she quoted, and she quoted First Peter, that you see, it is mentioned that you should love your wife. Sister, have you read the complete Quran? Have you read it, sister? Please, 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 uh, her mic. No question, please. Oh. <laughs> Mashallah, sister. It was not a question, sister. It was to support your answer. Still, you don't no. want to answer. No, I didn't read. You didn't read? No. Okay. I would like... I would like some volunteer to kindly take this copy of the Quran and gift it to her from my side. Sister, have, have, you, have you read the Bible? Yes, Fine. I did. You did? Yes. Okay, have you read 2 Timothy chapter number 2, verse number 11 and 12? No. I don't know. I A woman should completely submit herself to her husband as she submits herself to the God. Don't question your husband. If he is kicking you, take it. You are my God on earth. <laughs> Have you read Genesis chapter number 3 verse number 16? It says that the woman when she becomes pregnant and delivers the child, it is a punishment to the woman. The pain is a punishment. Why? If, if she tempted Adam to commit the sin, so God cursed the woman and he said, till end the woman's labor pains will be a curse. This is love and peace in the world. Then, the doctor of, doctrine of original sin, who is responsible? Woman. It's Eve who made all the sin of Adam to happen. Then sister, 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 please listen to the answer. You will get the complete time in your house too. Read the Quran. Then, according to the Bible, sister, book of Numbers, chapter number 5, verse number 11 to verse number 13, book of Leviticus, chapter number 12, verse number 5, have you read about the bitter water test? What is the bitter water test? The bitter water test was banned, not at the time of Jesus. It was banned very late, recently, when the European Renaissance took place, they banned it. What was the bitter water test? The bitter water test says, if your husband, if you are married, if you are not married tomorrow, if you marry a Christian husband, if your husband doubts about your chastity, he thinks when he is not at home, you are doing something wrong. So he will apply bitter water test for you. What is the bitter water test? According to the bitter water test, when that bitter water is given to you by a clergy in the church, when you drink it, you will become swollen and black. If you have become that, that means you have committed zina in the absence, fornication, adultery in the absence of your husband. Unscientific. Again, the Bible is unscientific. Science does not approve it. And it degrades the woman also. It's degrading the women also. Then coming to the Quran, what did Allah say in Surah Nisa, Surah number 4, Ayah number 35? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that if you fear that your wives at home have become disobedient to you. The translators put it disobedient. The Arabic word there is, if they have become adulteresses. In that case, first separate the bed, scold them. Third option is, beat them but not powerfully. This is what is said to the child. Even for the child, if the child becomes disobedient, 
sometimes the parents beat the child not because they are jallab but they love the child chastity of the woman is saved in islam only in the kamra in the room she is beaten how slightly not with power then allah continues to say in that ayat that you quoted sister don't take out undue means to beat her unnecessarily but you do not know about this sister that that ayat of the quran was abrogated it cannot be applied by a muslim today that ayat was abrogated by surah nur surah number 24 ayah number 1 to ayah number 20 when you read allah said if a husband has a doubt about the woman about his wife or the wife doubts the husband and they cannot get four eye witnesses to blame about the wife or the husband in that case both of them will swear by allah by four times and invite the curse of allah they will say oh allah i am sure that my wife is a fornicatress or the wife will say the same thing and the fifth time they will say wallahi if i am a liar may the curse of allah be upon me it's not to beat leave aside beating the wife do you know sister in islam if the child has grown up you saw my children if my children grow up i cannot beat them if it's an islamic country they will go to the court and book me i cannot beat them leave aside beating the wife in islam and because mashallah you have you might have started reading the quran with a christian scent in it anti islamic scent read it fairly sister wallah i am telling you sister you will not come across any book on the face of the earth that gives equality to women except the quran i hope i answered questions sister ट Allah is knower and he is powerful that is the meaning of ayat and i am observing everybody criticizing each other which is raising tension slowly slowly because i am a police officer i am observing everything for that also there is an answer for me from quran from surah qasisi ayat 55 وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا لَغْوَ أَخْرَجَ عَنْهُ وَكَلُوا لَنَا أَخْلُنَا وَلَكُمْ أَخْمَالُكُمْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ لَا نَفْتَقِ الْجَاهِلِ When you are hearing the unnecessary conversation please go away from that place don't argue don't fight don't criticize each other that is from that is one Allah Taala ka baat hai and when you are not interested please go away please kindly don't criticize each other. don't criticize each other try to establish peace among muslim and christian brotherhood as well as in our democratic india okay that is my concept we are fighting for the same i request every muslim brotherhood here who participated here for this session really it is very good and uh, thought provoking for everybody and i request everybody uh, to be peaceful and don't quarrel each other already your time is over the supreme court rulings are up to 10 o'clock only the commissioner has given permission up to 10 only still we have given half an hour more time because we have a lot of respect to islam okay you cooperate with us thank you very much thank you very much sir i thank pastor ranjit ofer the president of rkp rashtriya krishtav parishad brother imran the president of iref and all the audience who have cooperated in the success of this event
God bless you. Greetings to everybody, each and every one of you who is uh, watching this program. I bring blessings upon you in the name of Jesus. I'm happy to present this program, this debate before you after a long time. This debate took place between me and Brother Imran, a Muslim scholar, a real scholar, and he is a trusted disciple of uh, the great uh, Ahmad Yidat, the great Muslim apologist. Uh, so this uh, brother Imran carries that knowledge and that uh, version of his faith. And he's a very able argumentator, able debater. And unfortunately, he doesn't know Telugu. He can't speak in Telugu. So he invited me to debate with him on the question whether Bible is the word of God or the Quran is the word of God. Is Bible the word of God or Quran the word of God? That was the point of debate. And I have uh, gladly agreed to argue on the side of the Christian society, Christian community. It is a Christian's faith that the Bible is the word of God. So I have presented my argument and brother Imran presented his side of argument. He said, Bible cannot be the word of God. Quran only can be the word of God. So brother Imran tried to do justice to his faith. And brother Ranjit Ophir, that's me. I tried to do justice to my faith. And that was a long, lengthy debate. It went on for more than four and a half hours. And I had answered every question raised by Brother Imran. And I have presented my argument, my reasons, my proofs, my evidences, because of which we believe that Bible is the word of God. And uh, no argument of Ranjit Ophir was answered effectively by Brother Imran. And Brother Ranjit Ophir had effectively, efficiently, eminently answered every objection, every criticism raised by Brother Imran. There was not a single question which Brother Ranjit could not answer. And the whole debate went on very peacefully, in a loving, understanding, pleasant atmosphere. And the police officials who were there to maintain the peace, maintain the order, they said, the whole credit goes to Brother Ranjit Ophi because he was very much composed and he could not... Uh, he did not lose his patience. He maintained the cool atmosphere. And uh, they said, uh, we have to congratulate Brother Ranjit Ophir for maintaining this uh, debate in such a wonderful atmosphere. And after that debate happened, naturally, I'm a very busy man. I'm moving all over India and abroad. We could not upload the total version the total version of uh, the debate in the internet. Meanwhile, some other people have uploaded their version of the debate. They have done a lot of editing, cutting short, cutting out of the answers given by me. They had uh, tried to present that debate, uh, doing only favor uh, towards the Islamic argument and not doing any kind of justice to Christian argument presented by Ranjit Tofir. And just because the debate did not end up in a fight, in a quarrel, some people began to say that Ranjit Tofir lost the argument. He lost the debate. He was defeated in the debate. That's a very big global international joke. Ranjit Ophir is never defeated in any debate till this date. Never, never, never. 
Actually, the whole debate took place in English, and so many people who didn't know English were uh, propagating that I lost the debate. The debate was in English. The questions and answers were in English. People who did not understand English, they began to propagate the false news that Ranjit Ophi lost the debate. I wanted to upload the total version without cutting off, without editing even a single letter. So now, after such a long time, I am here before you presenting the total unabridged, unedited version of the debate between me and Brother Imran. Brother Imran was arguing that Quran alone can be the word of God. And I was arguing that the Bible is the word of God. And I had offered my evidences which Brother Imran could not condemn, could not disprove. He could not prove my evidences to be wrong. So kindly go through this debate and see uh, who had presented their argument rightly, wisely or justifiably. And you decide for yourself what is really the word of God. Is it the so-called Quran Sharif or the Holy Bible? May God bless you. May God bless you.